hello everyone good day to all of you welcome back in the previous video we discussed on the limitations of bit testing and one of them is in the uncertainty of locating the two where the error could be in the order of about 5 to 10 percent of the file length so how can we minimize this uncertainty we can minimize this uncertainty by conducting cross hole sonic logging test hi i am partha sarathi founder and managing director of sarathi geotech and engineering services private limited we are technical partners of file dynamics and represent them in this part of the world for conducting training programs and providing tech support <clears throat> the cross hole sonic logging test involves embedding an access tube along the reinforcement cage how many number of access tube is necessary as a thumb rule one for every 300 millimeter diameter of the pile is required example for a 1.2 meter diameter four number of access tube is necessary to be embedded and these access tubes are tied along the reinforcement cage as long as deep as possible to reach the pile bottom because you will be able to scan as low to the pile bottom as possible the bottom of the access tube shall be closed and then when the reinforcement is inserted into the pile bore hole and then the concreting is done once concreted the access tubes are filled with water in order to avoid debonding and then top of the access tubes shall also be closed in order to avoid any debris falling into the access tubes and obstructing while conducting the CSL testing. CSL tests are performed somewhere between 3 to 10 days after pouring the concrete. This involves inserting the sonic probes to the bottom of the access tube. There will be one transmitter and another receiver. The transmitter will transmit the sonic waves and the receivers will receive it. The time taken for the sonic waves to travel a known distance between the access tube shall be recorded. The distance traveled divided by the time is the velocity. <coughs> the velocity is also represented by the wave speed. As you pull the probes, out for every 50 millimeter one scan is recorded and you could see the transit time if it is uniform along the shaft then we can confirm the homogeneity in the quality of concrete if there is any defect or anomaly there will be a delay in the first arrival time and therefore the homogeneity of the concrete could be suspected so conducting tests shall be an all possible combinations for example if you have a four axis tube you need to scan two major diagonals and four perimeters. The latest CHAMPQ model has trans receivers which can emit the sonic waves as well as it can receive the sonic waves from the other probes. Therefore, four trans receivers can be lowered onto the four access tubes simultaneously and in one pull all possible combinations could be tested that has increased the efficiency by almost six times. <clears throat> While conducting the test, there is an emitted signal and also a received signal. The emitted signals has high amplitude. After a transit time, the received signals will have a redu reduced amplitude. The received signals will have a positive negative cycle. And these positive negative cycles could be nested into a horizontal line and number of such horizontal lines along the length of the shaft as you're pulling for every 50 millimeter will result in a waterfall diagram. The leading edge of the waterfall diagram is similar to the first arrival time. It also confirms your data processing. When the leading edge of the waterfall diagram is similar to the first arrival time, this pile could be qualified to be good pile or it has good integrity. When there is a delay in the first arrival time or a reduction in the energy, then there is also a complete loss of the signals in the waterfall diagram. That portions could be qualified to have a defect. Energy is an integral of the amplitude within a known number of data points. So it's very easy to look at the CSL scans and locate the defect or otherwise. For example, the data shown on the screen 
has a leading edge of waterfall diagram almost similar to the first arrival time and this pile could be qualified as good pile. When you compare the pit testing with the CSL on the same pile, you could see the comparison of the results on the screen. The pit testing on the right side has a velocity time history. You see the first peak and then you do not see any early re reflection ahead of the toe, but you could see the toe response. We know the limitation in locating the toe, which can have an error about 5 to 10 percent. This uncertainty could almost be eliminated by conducting the CSL scan while the access tubes are embedded as close to pile bottom as possible and this pile could be qualified to be good pile. Now on the screen the CSL scan clearly indicates loss of signal in the waterfall diagram, delay in the first arrival time and reduction in the energy. So this qualifies that this pile has serious defect at the mid length of the pile and this can also be confirmed by the pit testing. There is a positive reflections at the mid length of the pile and therefore this confirms there is a defect at that particular depth. And what you see the reflections beyond the first positive response is going to be a secondary reflections of this major defect and therefore as a limitations of pit test you cannot further evaluate anything beyond the first major defect. So comparing the same pile, the CSL test has complete loss of signal and therefore uh, the pit testing results and the CSL test results are almost comparable. I'll show you another example for locating the toe defect. So what you see on the screen on the CSL results is a complete loss of signals towards the bottom of the pile, the delay in the first arrival time and also reduction in the energy. In the pit test results, the velocity time history, you could see a positive reflection ahead of the toe. Again, there is an uncertainty in locating the toe. If you increase the wave speed, probably that defect that we have identified as a defect of the toe could be masked. So therefore, this uncertainty could be eliminated by performing a CSL test where the access tubes are embedded as close to the pile bottom as possible and complete loss of signals towards the bottom of the pile confirms there is a toe defect and the correlation between PIT and the CSL test results. So friends, conducting CSL test eliminates the uncertainty from the pit test. The integrity evaluation by the combination of the pit and CSL test will enhance the confidence of qualifying the pile. There are certain aspects that has to be explained. For example, if you are scanning six profiles, some profiles has loss of signals while the remaining profiles do not have any loss of signals. It implies that the defect is localized to a certain quadrant. Okay, this could be evaluated in a three-dimensional picture by conducting a tomography scans. Okay, as you see in the screen, there are some defects at three different levels along the shaft. Again, the limitations of the pit testing that if you detect the first major defect, then the other defects below the first major defects cannot be identified the pit testing. But in CSL scan, number of defects along the length of the shaft could be identified as you are already seeing on the screen. I hope this was very useful. Stay tuned for more information in upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning and I'll see you on my next video. Thank you.